What is exactly SAP RISE? Is it an acronym? We couldn't find any definitions really that SAP said, but uh, I think the one that I got, I think it was saying that realize, innovate, sustain, and enhance. Welcome to the Tech It Talk podcast, where we embark on a journey through the ever evolving realm of SAP and IT operations, automation, artificial intelligence, and cloud technologies. Whether you're an IT professional, a business leader, or simply curious about emerging technologies and industry insights, our episodes will be your compass in navigating this dynamic landscape with real-world experiences. Join us as we demystify complex concepts, explore innovative trends, and engage in stimulating dialogue with industry experts to empower you with insights that matter. The views expressed by our hosts and guests are their own and do not reflect the opinions of their respective companies. The producer of this Techie Talk podcast assumes no responsibility for any public content, ideas, or recommendations shared. Good morning. Hello, everyone. Um, it's a pleasure to have you in our first episode of our uh, brand new podcast. Today, in our episode, we want to talk about SAP RISE. Um, SAP is promising to reshape how organizations can execute their digital strategies, how they can drive innovation, streamline operations. And we really want to know what SAP RISE is and why you should care about it. Today, I'm here with several industry experts that can share their insights on how they are leveraging RISE, how they are helping customers and organizations to migrate, implement, or adopt RISE. So uh, I have Lynn Nguyen, Andrew Yi, Michael Arenas, and myself, by the way. Lynn, do you want to introduce yourself? our first episode to our audience. Sure, absolutely. So uh, thank you everyone for joining today's first episode is kind of exciting. Uh, we wanted to bring a fresh new set of content and talk about just uh, overall IT and SAP ecosystems and some of the rising topics that are there in terms of managing, operating uh, cloud and all the new services and AI. So hopefully, your folks will find this interesting. The first topic we thought about that was resonating with, uh, especially from my backend uh, experience with uh, working with SAP customers and, and partners over the last 30 years is, uh, it's always changing. And we find that uh, RISE has been on the topic a lot from uh, customers, partners, um, and, and even consultants and admin really curious what it is, uh, what the impact is, some are concerned, some see them as reward and some see as risks. So whatever it is, uh, we, we're here to have a little fun and, and um, hopefully uh, as co-founder of IT Conductor, we actually uh, see a lot of partners and, and customers uh, running their SAP environment all the time in different scenarios. Some are hosted, some are in cloud. Um, and some are trying to see what the upgrade path is and whether they should or not do cl cloud or they should consider RISE. So uh, as uh, kind of an insight, I get that question all the time from customers. So hopefully uh, this first episode will, will shed some light on that information as to uh, why and what are some of the uh, uh, understand um, point on some that are maybe misunderstood. And we'll have many other episodes uh, to follow on this topic to do deeper dives on things like migration and uh, what it is like to operate on uh, RISE in the public cloud. And uh, some of the other topics about integration, obviously it's going to be uh, managed by SAP. And so we, we want to talk about that a lot more. So hopefully uh, my background has uh, kind of been in consulting world for a long time and now being part of a cloud platform that help manage SAP customers' environment, uh, both on-prem and cloud, will help provide some insights to that. And we'll have some fun along the way. Enough about me. Next. Awesome. Thank you, Len. Welcome. Andrew, can you introduce yourself? 
Sure. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks uh, for having me. It's great to be here. Um, I'm Andrew Yi. Uh, I've been in the SAP uh, industry for the last uh, 26 years. I uh, started off mainly in the implementation of uh, HR and portals and BW and uh, um, then moved into sort of more of the management style of uh, managing projects and uh, programs and upgrades. And most recently, I'm the uh, SAP technology lead at um, Arterix and uh, we and help them uh, embark in a journey to migrate from uh, sort of an on-premise uh, solution to SAP Rise in the cloud. So thanks everyone for having me. Awesome, it's great having you here. Uh, Michael? Yeah, hi, thanks for having me on. I think uh, really excited about this new podcast uh, series that we have because it's gonna be able to get different perspectives on the industry and possibly just get different ideas for different people along the way. And so my perspective and my background has to do more on the sales side, working on the alliances side. So I've, I've, I've worked on the consulting side of the business. So I'm in relationship with the end user as well as with the hyperscalers. And so hopefully my viewpoint will kind of give some different ideas what I hear from end users and hyperscalers and pain points all around and benefits and and, and really what 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 customers are asking, right? What is this rise? What's the benefit that's going to bring to my organization? And so hopefully, you know, with this podcast, we could kind of distill some of those uh uh, you know, unknowns that, that a lot of people have right now. But thanks for right. having me. On. Great. That is great. That's uh, a lot of uh, expertise. And I uh, want to get into the conversation for today on SAP RISE. And uh, this is a great topic to start our our podcast and our series. Uh, hot topic. A lot, a lot of uh, buzzwords around it. So let me just start with what is exactly SAP RISE? What does it mean, RISE? Does it, is it an acronym for anything or what is SAP RISE? We couldn't find any definitions really that SAP said, but uh, there's a few out there, right? If you start using ChatGPT and start finding out what it says, there's probably a bunch of uh, variations. I think the one that I got, I think it was saying that realize, innovate, sustain and enhance so that's uh, i guess realization of sap's taking over the world and innovate maybe they'll continue to innovate on the cloud sustain i guess for customers who just want to continue running sap and then enhance of course they're always asking you to put in some new enhancement pack right so uh, maybe sap will take care of that for you in the future so that, that's that's what i got anybody else got any other flavor of it I always thought that E in, in SAP was about expensive, but maybe <laughs> it's in hand. Uh, well, it's I, not entirely wrong, right? <laughs> <laughs> also, yeah, I, I've also, looked everywhere and I, have, I haven't seen actually uh, the, the definition anywhere. So um, yeah. I think we can fill in in whatever we want, I guess. Isn't it, it yeah. don't you guys find it a little bit uh, funny though? I mean, like something that big that everybody's talking to about. But like, there's no definition of it coming from the vendor who made it up. Mm -hmm. it, yeah, it's it's really interesting. Yeah, it's yeah, interesting yeah. marketing. I, I I gotta say, SAP is like number one in marketing. I, I'd say anything they come out with a word, a buzzword, everybody start talking about it. Nobody know what it is, and and then everybody has their own version of what it is. So. I think their uh, I think their acronyms usually are three letters, and that's why they fill it with names. And now that they have four, it's impossible for them to figure out the four. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you can speculate. The next set of SAP systems going to allow four letter sit names. Maybe? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So, uh, what is behind SAP Rise? Then is it uh, outsourcing? Is it implementation? Uh, how how could we describe to our audience what SAP Rise is offering with it? Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I'll take a stab at it. Um, I think it's uh, to to put it in a layman's term. To me, it's it's kind of um, like a, a white labeling of any. Um, cloud provider service, so either it's AWS or Azure, and what they've done is um, they've tried their best to make an a la carte menu list of how to manage uh, an SAP system. So they're really trying to boil down services in a way that is um, 
uh, easily digestible for um, like a, a new customer, for example, to come in and say, okay, I can pick from these list of services, um, and uh, my my system then ser- are, are hosted in a in a in a cloud environment, and it, that, that to me it's invisible. I don't I really don't need to to worry about that. So I think that's the the whole premise of what they're trying to um, to to bundle in terms of the the rise service, and obviously it fits in with the rest of their their cloud offerings that uh, that they have. But um, in this particular one, I think we're uh, mainly focused around, let's say, the customers would be using it for S4 and any other uh, sort of core um, ERP uh, add-ons. Mm. Uh, is it is it infrastructure as a service? Do they offer infrastructure management, application management, both, or is within the stack? Do they define yeah, I mean that- where it is? Because it's very confusing. But. Yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, I guess we could, if we had a look at um, their 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 sales documentation, they they, they definitely have um, a lot more, uh, I guess, clarity and um, high level uh, view in it. But yeah, they, they from my view, they they do manage the 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 infrastructure related to running the uh, and and uh, setting up the the, the S four systems. Um, mm-hmm. They do provide, um, you know, more like the if we wanted to cheer out, um, you know. The, the the application setup the the installations the um the the just the running of s4 yes that that is, that is included when you start to say oh are you managing all the application and how it runs i think that's when we're getting into the nuance of um what what service you're asking sap to do i think they can offer um from from the lower level all the way to the uh to 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 more um, active uh, monitoring and so on i think that's where they start to bundle in their their different types of services right so i think that's where it gets a little bit nuanced and probably leads to the confusion of customers saying, how much do you actually uh, do for us when when SAP is up and running? So I think that's really up to the, it's a little bit more nuanced, I think, with with SAP when you're starting to bundle what you're what you're uh, requesting them to do. It's not as, not as, I think it's more varied. It has more, um, more color within there that you could uh, select from. So I explained it to customers who've been here before. I've had customers who actually were hosted by SAP in its prior incarnation. Uh, they tell me RISE is kind of like version 2.0 of Hack. If you can imagine SAP went into the hosting or managed services uh, before when they offer HANA Enterprise Cloud. Uh, the main difference is I think back when HANA Enterprise Cloud was primarily the infrastructure hosted by SAP and all the admins and basis people uh, that were driving the day-to-day operations of it were SAP and then the customer focused on their business. I think SAP tried to say that in order to take away the complexity of running SAP, don't worry about the technical stuff. We'll, We'll take care of the technical stuff. You guys focus on the business aspects of your processes and uh, industry best practices. Um, and so when they did that the first time, the, the the public cloud vendors weren't there. The hyperscalers were very young at the stage. Right? You think about AWS being the first one, and then Microsoft and then Google Cloud. Uh, most of those guys weren't around when heck, uh, you know, f- got into the whole hosting business. There were a lot of managed service providers who were doing it on-prem for other customers. So SAP had the offering heck. Uh, and the customers did go there and they started, you know, hosting their systems. And then at some point, the hyperscalers kind of leapfrog, right? They innovate at a great speed and start offering price reductions. Almost, I remember AWS offering price reduction almost every uh, six months. There was, let's say, a cheaper virtual machine, storage costs were coming down. And so the rise of the hyperscalers kind of Oh, SAP, hey, maybe hack is not what we're trying to push anymore. We should be pushing our own infrastructure, data centers, etc. And I think this version 2.0, let's say, uh, was like rebuild of hack to say now we can offer that same services, but on a public hyperscaler. So if people have been there before with either hosted from other vendors, um, they can't understand what hosting is, except now SAP saying, hey, I'm going to just maybe let you choose a public cloud that you like. Maybe you have more 
closer alliance to one hyperscaler than the other and maybe you choose that but we'll run it there for you and uh, you hold the keys to the kingdom but we'll run the services you don't have to worry about it so uh, maybe that's the best way i could phrase it to explain to somebody it would, else it, it would bridge the gap between the cloud and the customer right and the organization with that specialized knowledge that you need on a particular cloud because they they manage the cloud they provide that service they provide infrastructure services on top of a public cloud uh, so it, it helps customers or organizations to adopt cloud and the benefits of it knowing that they don't need to be specialized in in the cloud and they can get some services in in, in, in addition to that. Yeah, and I think also from the perspective of, of you know, where they're marketing it to, you gotta look at, they're, they're really marketing toward smaller and mid-sized organizations. And so the ones that don't have a lot of resources to really manage an SAP full all on enterprise edition, right? And so they're like kind of saying, hey, we're the experts, let us run it for you, but you gotta be, stuck with us for for however long you have your organization right but you know then you'll be able to take advantage of stuff in the cloud as jordy was saying and i think that's really the you know the easy i hate to use this word but the easy button for a lot of organizations because they're they think of erp and they think a lot of money and so this kind of like makes it a real easy transition for them um and so i think that you know, speaking to what Heck was originally and where they kind of started from, you're right, uh, Lynn, I think, you know, it's like this is version two of it, right? You know, how can we continue to grow the SAP footprint out there, right? And so I think that's, and I've seen it across SAP is that they've been able to capture a lot of the low hanging fruit of these smaller organizations and convert them pretty easily because of, you know, they have a lot of mechanisms in place to make it very inexpensive entry point uh, initially so I, I think that's a great great point on who is sap rise for what type of organization will best adopt sap rise and maybe a large organization with a lot of experience in the cloud they have built their skills their competencies and etc maybe they don't see a lot of value in it maybe organizations that are trying to adopt the cloud, but they're not ready, they, are, they don't have enough staff. Uh, they see that as an overwhelming initiative to migrate from premise to the cloud. And SAP tries to accelerate all of that, so really accelerate the cloud adoption in small and medium organizations that otherwise they would take a lot longer. Um, could that be a, a good start? Uh, who is this for? As a customers that have already SAP, but maybe they have an older version of SAP on premise. They need to upgrade. They need to migrate. Use this. I think that's that thing a is, big. Yeah, who, that's who is this for? Yeah, yeah. I think you're right on, right there, Jordy, with that because it, it's almost uh, attracting those customers that either have those legacy systems of SAP and they've just been kind of shoestringing it along for their organizations, and so this kind of creates this whole, you know, I love Lynn's uh, uh, way of how you describe a smart home, right? Where you just like, oh, it's the easy button. You just talk to Alexa and it tells you everything to do without you having to do everything. So this is kind of like that same version, I, I think, and that's really what the attraction is there. And and what, what, what ends up, um, a lot of customers get trapped into, well, this is the easy way to do, and then, but they forget to look at what it's going to cost them down the line. And I think that's really where also a lot of them get stuck, right? That's why I think SAP has reached a certain level of hitting the low hanging fruit of sales. And now they're like, oh my, now we have to really justify the cost of, of, of rise to these customers now. But they're getting smarter. You know, yeah. and I think consulting firms are, I think people in the industry are starting to go, well, really, is it really that, at, you know, is it really that cost effective? You yeah. know, it doesn't if make sense for our, our company that already has a legacy old version of SAP, ECC and premise is adopting SAP rise a migration transformation or is a lift and shift. 
how easy it is for that organization to say, hey, here it is, move it to the cloud. I don't want to do anything. Um, or or is it's a lot of effort to transform businesses, processes, operations to adopt the cloud and adopt new technologies. How how is that? Well, that's so a good think, teaser for more episodes, but I think uh, <laughs> and, and, and Andrew probably can add a lot more uh, flavor into uh, yeah. why customers are adopting, because uh, uh, I think he's been through when customers went the other way and then started to change the rise. Uh, maybe some insights yeah. from Andrew. Yeah, that would be, yeah, yeah that's a whole other topic in itself, right? <laughs> I think that that's a really well, good point in terms of technically we can spin off and talk about how to and what do we need to do and how, you know, how we can uh, enable customers to migrate and move. But I think, you know, part of that decision, I think it, it we have to look at um, where this is being marketed to, right? We're, we're marketing to, it's being marketed to, you know, senior management, you know, CIO level, uh, financial um, director to say, hey, um, you know, maybe you should consider Rise. And then from that level, maybe they don't know that much about what it actually is. But I think one of the things that SAP has done well to sort of um, bring in those types of decision makers is their their change in the way that they're currently licensing um, uh, um, license uh, user licenses and their fees. So I think one of the things in a core ERP or on-premise um, you know, limited user, a professional user, they've actually created a sort of a new concept of uh, being able to share those those users to um, uh, so that you know you you when you, you don't just have the, the the 50 professional user licenses you can take these um, what they call uh, 50 FUE licenses and then they can yeah. be shared right so then from that perspective uh, customers are from a licensing perspective it's not the one to one named user anymore they can actually one to X and then they're, they're like oh you can scale with the business and I think that that is a an easy entry point for some um, in the small or mid market that is saying, hey, you know, I only have like a hundred users in their in their named space, and maybe that's that's mm. too much. You know, I, I can't pay for a hundred right now. So then they're like, oh, well, maybe these FUEs would only be. Uh, I'm just making this up now. The licensing is a little bit more complicated than that, but they might might say you only need twenty FUEs or fifty FUEs, and then that gives you a scalability to what the old method would be five hundred users, for example, right? So th that that that's just is a is a it's an attractive way for for customers to get into um, um, S4 to be able to not have to have, let's say, a basis team of uh, five or seven resources to run something and you know they don't even have that maybe they only have one uh, one basis resource that does all right so now they're having the to, to ramp up and build up their team. So I think there's some there's some um, ways that they're trying to uh, make it easier to get into uh, the, the the S4 ecosystem, um, brownfield or uh, uh, greenfields, I think. So it sounds like to me they did uh, what they call, I, I in, in the financial world, we call that financial engineering, right? <laughs> so SAP probably got you know, complaints from customers on everybody know recently of all the so-called um, inflation, right? So everybody's raising maintenance fees on software. Uh, you know, even at IT Conductor, we're like, hey, how do we how do we manage operations with increasing costs? And maybe we need to raise fees to customers. It's never a good topic to talk to customers on true up or renewal about raising maintenance fees. Uh, it's easier to sell a new deal. With, with fees that don't look like they rose because you just say, hey, this is brand new, this is cost mm -hmm. you this much. And so from a financial engineering standpoint, it looks like, you know, quite a genius move from SAP to kind of say, let me bundle in licensing with uh, mm -hmm. services and then, you know, you, you're changing from CapEx to OpEx. And, you, mm -hmm. you know, are you getting two line items instead of like a 50 uh, page, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, kind of bill? And I know people are scared of cloud because the cloud cost can go out of hand and you're getting lots of different bill on this and that and that. So I think maybe there is that also pressure from hyperscalers who became uh, great at pricing and billing for utility services, right? I mean, you get a bill just like, you know, you get your streaming bill, you get like 
oh, I got, I got, I got this from Disney and I got this from Netflix. And so now it's just kind of like a line item on SAP. Oh, yeah, you got your bill. You got one line item for licenses and uh, one line item for services. And it's like two line items. And somewhere in between there uh, is a happy medium, what I call financial engineering. So from that, I'd say kudos to SAP, making it simpler. Um, there's always some hidden stuff there, I'm sure. But hey, uh, it's still early days after two years. So, so Andrew, I'm kind of curious. Though. So you said that this probably they market very well to upper management or maybe the C-suites, right? Yeah, I think it's an incentive uh, for, let's say you're, um, in, you know, in, in this uh, the situation where you're an on-premise customer and um you know your 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 license uh, renewals coming up and then you have um a, a large number of users as you expand and that that's probably where sap is able to reduce that barrier to entry by saying okay you know um you can you can move on to rise um they'll obviously help you migrate on to um or or do a greenfields implementation, uh, but then they can they have a lot of flexibility with uh, the the licensing options that they can offer you to entice you to to get onto a ride. So I think that's a that's a very uh, powerful um, uh, mechanism and a driving force for uh, you know management to be able to say, hey, there I'm getting this real big incentive uh, to to basically move um, in the next maybe in the, if you do a contract, let's say they do a th- you know, one year, two year, three year, probably a three to five year contract, they, they will from that re- reduction of uh, cost, be able to save it. Now, l- later on down down the, 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 the road, it might end up costing a little bit more, probably if you factor that in, but it's not an upfront cost and that to, to businesses right now, you know, to, to save on the next three to five years, is, it's, it's definitely worth that uh, investment. So I think that's where they have a really good um, flexibility to be able to offer and move um, um, S4 customers on, on to rise. It seems like a great fit for any company or organization that is already outsourcing some of their infrastructure. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they're on the other side, they also have SAP fees, licenses, maintenance, and so on to combine all of that, having a single uh, single vendor providing all those services uh, and s- streamlining you know, not 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 only the billing, but also simplifying single point of contact, those things that may may make operations a bit easier. It it seems to me also financial engineering wise, this is kind of my thing on on why they were able to do it now and maybe not earlier. In the earlier days, um, as you know, like Hana is SAP's like you know kind of latest baby, right? That's well, we say baby, it's all 10 years at toddler right now. Um, but I think before they were struggling to offer SAP customers to run on what they used to call kind of, you know, multi-vendor heterogeneous environment with different databases from other vendors. I won't name names, but, you know, they have a big ecosystem of partners and, and some partners become kind of frenemies, if you will. So in a way, when they went to HANA uh, many years ago, it became a enabler for them now to offer this single financial, you know, incentive to be on SAP, managed by SAP, on SAP technology stack, because you don't have to worry, we can give you discounts on database because we own it, you know, whether you want to run with HANA or Sybase or MaxDB or whatever. So I think also that that makes kind of sense why they are able to do it now and maybe not earlier, because earlier, you remember, you have to cut a check to another vendor for database licenses, right? Um, you can manage the software on top, but and the database license might be different and then it became costly. Um, and then so from that perspective, this now, I think they are able to do it more readily, easily convinced within the internal uh, departments or divisions of SAP who runs database divisions. Um, yeah, yeah, you automatically meet your numbers when customer go to rise because we're gonna make sure we standardize on HANA. To me, it also means that they get a chance to say, hey, you know, we standardize it. You're going to have like only three flavors of this and not 15 or 20 flavors. And, you know, that will reduce the complexity of running stuff. So so I think standardization may be the other uh, That's something yes. that they, yeah. Yes, yeah, simplified. Yeah. Simplified. 
Simplify. Okay, simplify. All right. At least simplify. So, but I I I, I see that. Uh, <laughs> can we summarize at least one thing though? We know that SAP Rise is not just for greenfield, right? I, I mean, they do target brownfield customers. Is that right? Yeah, I think so. I think uh, usually the threshold is around 138, 140 FUEs or less tend to be the good market area for for Rise. Uh, is what they're targeting. Awesome. Yeah. Hey, I would like to just touch base, and that will be a great uh, point for the following uh, upcoming uh, episodes. Is what services does Grice provide? And oh, great, great point. Touch mm -hmm. base on. <laughs> I know there's going to be gray areas, but do they <laughs> offer user management, or they offer? patching servers just a little bit because that's going to open a new mm -hmm. set of conversations mm -hmm. maybe for the coming yeah episode. so i think that's in the our, our operations related uh, uh, episode uh, coming soon to a channel near you uh kind of a teaser here but i think we've covered so far at least today the what is rise and 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 how it's structured from a management or maybe a line item or financial level and maybe from a marketing as well as uh, but perhaps some directions of technology high level at least i know now i mean management can can talk to cloud and justify it much more easily than they would you know 10 years ago right I remember yeah. heck uh, 10 years ago uh, you tried to explain cloud there was so many confusion like is it an enterprise cloud or is it like aws cloud you know so i think now cloud everybody knows what it is uh, everybody know what managed services is and so combining that and making it attractive mm -hmm. to the cfo is, is is a nice way to put it so um i i think yeah i, I get i certainly talking to you guys i had my understanding what rise was and i think talking to different folks like from the sales side like michael who's been doing uh, sales for sap kind of services to the large and, and medium-sized enterprises kind of get that perspective of what some challenges and what customers think it is and then from andrew's perspective having actually done a rise implementation uh, didn't, didn't didn't i remember right uh, first it went to just normal public cloud and then somewhere in between the cost got really attractive for upper management and they switch to rise yeah 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 that's that's true i mean we the the um, the, the the situation was uh, we it was already we we had, it was utilizing a uh is more of a private cloud and in another uh, infrastructure <laughs> provider uh and then um from a, a license renewal um, point perspective, the, the, it was very attractive at that time. Obviously, two, um, two years ago, um, with when SAP is offering um, something new and they want um, customers to adopt, um, it, it, it can be very attractive. Uh, and uh, it was uh, a pivot that um, was done to 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 migrate away from um, this uh, um, outsourced. Um, uh, ASP basically and move into the rise uh, environment which um, I mean over the last two years it has definitely um, matured uh, significantly in terms of um, the services that they can provide how they provide it um, some of the tools that they're now offering to be able to monitor and view uh, um, um, the SAP environment has uh, um, improved significantly over the last two years so you can really see that it is their their way to um, um, incentivize customers to to adopt it. Uh, so yeah, that situation um, it became just just a uh, too attractive to to, mm, to ignore. Mm. So that's the reward part of my yeah. risk and reward side, right? So depending, <laughs> I guess, from what perspective you come from, Rise will have yeah. something for you to consider whether it's a, a risk or a reward for you. I guess something for everybody. Maybe that's uh, the best way to put it. Maybe. You're on one side of the fence or on the other side, yeah. depending on where you come from, that could be a rewarding thing or it could be a risk. So we it also all have depends to... on uh, the, the, the hierarchy of where you are as well. Yeah, because exactly. The, yeah. the higher up you are, the more reward it is and the lower when you're in the operational, it could be more <laughs> uh, of a risk. But... That hasn't changed, right? Rewards typically uh, <laughs> that's right. Uh, are from the top and then they trickle down economics, maybe that's what they call yeah. it. <laughs> that's right. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Um, uh, th this is a great start of 
SAP advice, what it is. Uh, I think we touch base on some good topics and open probably for following up uh, conversations, uh, new episodes on operations, what is the details of it and migrations or implementations, things like that, that we'll cover. Um, Thank you, everyone. Uh, Thank you for uh, listening to our first episode. We're very excited to have uh, this series and uh, we can, um, I can thank obviously Lynn, Michael and Andrew for making the time to be and having this uh, great conversation. Thank you, everyone. All right, and well, the next episodes will be teaser, and there'll be more people invited, and uh, you know, hopefully, we'll get more interaction from other folks and different backgrounds, etc. But we'll continue this topic next time. Until next time, thank you very much, folks. Thank you. Thank you. All right, take care. Bye bye.